Welcome to Isolation Comedy by Comedy Wham. Austin comics need a helping hand. While they're kept away from the comedy stages, I lost three months of bookings. I thought I was famous. I'm not famous anymore, but welcome. We're apparently the first online comedy showcase in Austin. Now, each performer will have their social media and their Venmo handle. If you love a comic, contribute to their Venmo directly to the show you love. If you'd like to donate to PayPal, you can also do that. Use and follow Isolation Comedy on social media. Thank you. You're probably thinking, this is not a stand-up comedy show. You're right. I've been avoiding being a YouTube star for a very long time, and this is terrifying for me. But on the good news, if this was a regular stand-up comedy show, we'd be at a bar or like a stand-up comedy club, and I'd be telling you a bunch of rules about what you had to do. Like, turn off your phone and don't talk and like, don't drink too much beer, but like, fuck all of that. I'm in your house, so like, cheers, let's drink. I'm going to at every comic, thank you so much. I'm Colton Dowling. And sometimes I'd kind of like warm up the crowd. I'd say, what's up? Who's in the crowd? I guess I'm gonna do a little bit of a blues clues thing with like a, hey, does anybody have kids out there? You do? <laughs> wow, I'm sorry. This quarantine must be really hard for you. I myself fucking hate kids because they have all these rules. There was like, Colton, Colton, you can't swear. I'm like, no, motherfucker, you can't swear. I can swear all the fuck I want. And so that's pretty fun. Um, Anybody out there know their love language? Oh yeah, I'm so sorry. During this, <laughs> I didn't even, I was just getting into my jokes. Uh, during this, you can side chat on the um, Twitch thing right there and subscribe below. It's fun. Um, if you, I can't see the Twitch to be honest and there's a little bit of a delay. So some of the comics might interact with you, some of them won't. None of us, I don't think, are online YouTuber-esque people, but objectively, every single one of these comics is absolutely a killer, a <laughs> murderer uh, of comedy. They're very, very funny. I have described one of these comics as funnier than any of you ever will be, and I'll stand by that. I will. We'll find out who. Um, for me, uh, this uh, quarantine has been pretty hard because uh, I adopted a 10-year-old boy uh, about a month ago, and I thought I was being a real hero. Um, I kind of made a big mistake. He's a 10-year-old boy named, uh, we found him as a Jeff, and we just thought, yuck. So we renamed him Jean-Claude. <laughs> yes, I mean, fancy French faggot like his father, this guy. And so that every time he fucks up, we can go, Van Dam, Jean-Claude. <laughs> I don't think so, mister. But yeah, it's been pretty cool. Um, I feel like I want more applause breaks, but I can't hear anybody. What, what can I do to fix that? Huh. I guess I'll, oh, I get, I'm getting lots of messages. Thank you everybody for coming. Um, well, I, uh, to, um, I, John Claude asked me about the coronavirus, and I do not know anything about the coronavirus. Um, so he said, I said, go on the internet and just find some stuff out. And so he came back to me and he said that he had done some reading and that, um, it's a, it's a conspiracy to ruin Trump's economy. And, uh, and then I told him to go lick a fucking handrail, you piece of shit. So I'm not doing great in this uh, quarantine. And also that is my favorite new phrase. And I hope, it, uh, I hope it transcends. I am looking to be a little bit nicer to everybody, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I think that you guys are in for a real treat and I'm not gonna lie to you about having a son anymore. It's silly. I need to come up with real, 
real material about real life. My dad insists that uh, I talk about him, but he's just not that funny. So I don't know. Let's bring up some really funny comedians. Your first comedian is, well, I guess your first comedian that's not me is a funny, very, very, very funny lady. Her credits are also, she wrote a Van Damme Jean-Claude web series with me. So that got into South by Southwest and then uh, that got canceled. So we're releasing a Kickstarter, but I want you to make a lot of noise in your houses. Make some noise in your fucking houses. <laughs> I don't know. Make some noise in your houses for the very funny Candace Medina. America's sweetheart, Candace Medina. Welcome. You may know me from my prior projects, such as Backyard Sluts. You can follow us, Instagram at Backyard Sluts, or some other products I've been involved in, like crying at a Los Consuelos restaurant after getting laid off. It's been a good time here, wild times. I don't really know what this crisis is going to bring to us. Last night I was watching a television show and I was actively rooting for cousins to kiss. So I guess that's the state of this country. I'm not really sure. Normally when I hit rock bottom, I like to drink wine out of my car. Pretty notorious for that. But lately I've been thinking, what's going to happen when the wine runs out? And I don't know. Do you ever think that like we're in a matrix? You know, like this is my final form and we're in a matrix, but this matrix is also combined with Wally -E and like iRobot. And it's just like the machines have risen up, okay? And they're taking over, spreading illness and hysteria so that we can rely solely on them. Just me? I don't know. Not here to talk about conspiracy. But what if? Anyway, I'm going to be doing an educational video today. And this video is to demonstrate science and the arts. And I want to preface this by saying uh, it's legal for Texans to make limited amounts of beer and or wine for personal consumption. Check your local laws for details. Do not attempt this at home. So one thing uh, I really enjoy is a little bit of science. Uh, one time in college, I got a C in organic, organic chemistry without even going to class. So today, what we're going to be doing is taking sugars and converting them into ethanol, some CO2, I guess, and byproduct probably. I don't know, correct me, I don't care. But, oh gosh, we're gonna be making today, which is a traditional Greek drink. They've been making it for thousands of years by way of Dionysus. This is what's called a hooch. So the first, uh, there's many ways to make hooch. Um, I'm not here to school you on it. I'm not Greek, but we're going to do it. And one of the ways is like you can get some fruit and just like smash it up into a bag with some fruit cocktail, a little ketchup, a couple pieces of bread. And you just let that shit sit. Uh, you want to put it in some warm water a few times a day for like up to 10 days and burp that bag. But we're going to make it much simpler version. It's very less involved, less active. You're going to take some juice, um, 
and just a bottle of juice like this. I don't know if you can tell what it is, but it should be fine. Go ahead and dump some of that juice out. We just need a little room for this uh, puppy to expand. Next, you're gonna wanna, you can, but you don't really have to do this step, but if you wanna get really boozy with it, I would recommend it. And you're just gonna dump some sugar in there. Three tablespoons should be good enough, but you can do up to a cup if you're a sick pup. Next, um, I reached out to one of uh, my favorite brands, uh, Fisher, Fisherman, it's like Fisherman's or something, uh, yeast, and they regretfully declined to sponsor this video. So this is uh, still their yeast, but it's just damn good. If you want to make a really good hooch, you want to get some champagne yeast potentially. This is just good old bread yeast. Just gonna dump it in there. Take your top, shake it up, and you're just gonna leave it like a little bit on, like halfway screwed. You could always use like a balloon. It's really good for with a little pinhole. Um, but my mind prison doesn't have balloons. So we're gonna do this method instead. If you're in actual prison, maybe use a condom. I don't know if they have those in prison, but they goddamn well should. We're just gonna let this sit out for a few days, three to five days. Turn it to cap all the way around, put it in your fridge. It's ready to get slugged. It's good. Um, at the three day mark, if you wanna make it super delicious, uh, like a sparkling, you can just put the top on all the way in the fridge. This has been uh, really fun. I'm sad to say that obviously I don't have a finished project product or project maybe. I don't have a finished product here, so you know what? Cheers to you and yours at home. This is uh, another one of my fam famous sponsors. We're called, uh, it's kind of like Buzz Balls, um, but it's got a Z instead of an S. And I'm not sponsored by them at all. I don't know how time they're gonna take for this, but cheers to you and yours at home. May we all survive this crisis, and may you not fall into the pits of your mind prison within this matrix that we've been found in. Have a good night. Cheers. told you I'm drinking at every comic. This is going to be fun for me. This is going to be very fun for me. And a Candace, she, I don't know how long, I don't know how that was going to go. Also, some of us not doing stand-up sets, just funny people doing funny things. This next guy though, he's open up for the Sklar brothers. He hosts the mic and he just does this all the time. He is one of the nicest people in the entire world. He has the kindest heart that I know of. Definitely on this show, the kindest person. Zach must be. <laughs> Is it Zach? That means I'm up. Uh, uh, how's everybody? Uh, how's everybody? That's good. Good to hear. Um, just uh, just for you people watching on uh, the the thing, the Twitch. I also have my Pornhub account open. So those of you who are watching this can be slightly different than what we're used to. So we're just gonna ease into it here. I am going to be one of the people that's doing raw, uh, raw stand-up. It's going to be raw. Uh, <clears throat> so let's get started. Uh, the coronavirus, right? You know, that's pretty cool. Uh, 
Well, I've seen a lot of people talk about online that uh, now is the worst time to have allergies. I don't know. For my money, it seems like this is the worst time to have coronavirus. <laughs> I'm 26 years old. All right. So anybody else? Yeah, uh, I'm also, uh, I also weigh 260 pounds. Um, whew, that usually at least gets a clap. Uh, that means I've gained 10 pounds every year I've been alive, which means at this rate, by the time I'm 50, I will have been dead for 12 years. So, thank you, thank you. Uh, whew, it's an interesting room. Um, I'm also 26 years old, uh, means I'm a pretty mature guy. I think pretty mature for my age. Uh, thank you. Uh, like for instance, I would much rather like read a book than to be breastfed. I think that's, that shit's for babies in my opinion. Um, not a very mature thing to do. Uh, whew. 26 mature, but I have a lot of immature friends. So every time they, uh, come over to my place, I feel this compulsion to hide the fact that I have lotion in my room because I don't want them to know I have lotion because I feel like if they saw lotion in my room, they would, you know, ask me to masturbate in front of them. So, which would be like a reverse Louie because I wouldn't want to do it. So, um, trying to get a dad bod going. Anybody else out there trying to get a dad bod? Cool. It's probably going to happen during this quarantine. Um, so what I've been trying to do, cause I hear the ladies like the dad body. So, um, what I'm trying to do is emulate my dad's body, but it turns out that nobody wants to fuck a box of ashes. So yeah. Um, poof. yeah. Wow. Cool. Uh, the porn hub chat like that one. That's good. Cool. 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 A lot of, they also have a lot of dead fathers. Apparently cool. They related. Um, poof. Cool, cool. Uh, who remembers Barack Obama, right? I bet we all miss him right now. Yeah. I was having, a fr uh, on Skype, I was having lunch with a friend of mine recently. And uh, he was like, you know, Barack Obama is not your friend. And I was like, yeah, I know that. He was the president. He goes, no, you don't understand. Um, Barack Obama has had more drone strikes than any president in recorded U.S. history. And I was like, more than Lincoln? Are we sure about that? So, wow, dead room tonight. That's great. I used to, uh, before this whole thing happened, I used to uh, live somewhere else, like most people. I've lived many places. Uh, one of those places was uh, with a girlfriend of mine. Uh, she's now my ex-girlfriend. Um, so, uh, wow, that just hit me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I used to live with her. And, uh, you know, one day I, I left the toilet seat up. I'm sure many of you at home know where this one's going. I left the toilet seat up and she got really mad because she didn't know I was living there. Um, she's Swedish, still is. That's how lineage works. That just continues. But uh, I got her from IKEA. Um, I put her together myself. Um, I think I read the instructions wrong though, because she was always walking around saying, "I feel incomplete. I'm no longer in love with you." Who's got nephews and nieces? Right? Anybody? Cool. I took uh, I took my nephew to the park recently in Houston. By the way. Fuck Houston, Texas. I, I hate it. It's a terrible place. If you're watching the stream from Houston, I, this doesn't apply to you. It, it, yeah, okay. But um, took my nephew to the park, and he wanted to go down the slide. So I brought him over to the slide. He climbs up to the top of the slide and immediately starts weeping. I get it. He's three years old. Imagine being three years old, that high for the first time, having to see that much of Houston. It would jar anybody. I'm actually going to switch tracks. I don't like that joke right now in this context because it implies that there's an outside to go to. That's not true anymore. Um, I, uh, I was hanging out with a girl um, before this, well before this, uh, well, well before, about 30 pounds before this. And um, we we're hanging out and uh, yeah, uh, we we're smoking a little bit of weed. So I was being cool. As you guys can imagine. And um so I was like, I'm going to actually, that one only works with crowd work. That's not going to work in this context at all, but just, uh, I'll do one more joke and then I'll get out of here. Uh, I'm sure right now we all miss parties, right? 
everybody at home. So I've actually come up with the correct answer to the, the, the eternal question of what's the best type of party. The answer is gender reveal party. Um, I went to a gender reveal party recently. Um, my sister uh, was pregnant again. And um, they had this idea for the party. They were going to get a pile of explosives and a rifle because there were children around. And they were going to shoot it. And whenever the explosion happened, the color of the smoke was going to dictate the gender of the baby. So my brother-in-law lines up the shot, breathes in, shoots on the exhale like a pro, and he misses. And then I said, oh, she's having an abortion. That was the silence that I, I felt at the party, too. Um, my family was like, you can't say that. I go, come on, guys, you can't kill the joke before it has a chance to come to life. Anyway, thank you guys so much. I'm Zach Busby. I open for the Squire Brothers. Busby, what a kind man. He said a lot of dark things, but I promise you his heart's where the right place is. I'm sure of it. Also, I forgot to mention my love language. I, if you guys are just tuning in, this is a bunch of stand-up comedians. We uh, are all out of work because we can't, we can't do live comedy. Uh, I've canceled up till June, uh, canceled a couple festivals. So everybody's going to have their, uh, their Venmo up. So if you can support them, we'd love it. We actually need it. Um, I want to let you know that my love language, I forgot to tell you, is 69. Um, I love it. <laughs> Every time I'm doing it, I'm just like, L is for the way you look at me. O is for the other hole you see. I always see the asshole. V is for the vagina. So now it's time to bring up your next comedian. Um, so funny, opened up for many a very, very famous comedian. She is host of uh, Kinda Tropical, and she is great. Put some noise and drink some beers. Take off your pants and get relaxed for Allison Voidovich. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. Woo. Sorry guys. I'm not abiding by quarantine at all. Um, just kidding. These are my fans. They live with me. Um, I'm a firm believer that after all of this, some of us are going to be super hot because there's nothing to do but work out. And then the rest of us are just going to be fatter and drunker than ever. Colton, glad to see what team you are on. <laughs> Someone's got to do it. Um, yeah, I, uh, so I went, uh, I, I have been socially isolated for three days now. I know that makes me not woke to some people, but I work in the medical industry part-time, so I had to go out. Um, I went to a two-hour improv show a couple weeks ago that was about zombies, and I threw out that I think Sage can kill zombies, so guess what your bitch has been doing for the last three days, just making sure these zombies are staying away. I'm a crystal bitch now, essentially. I found God in the last three days stuck in my house. Um, I do work uh, in the alternative health space. It's a very interesting space to work in. Uh, everyone there thinks that drugs are healthy, like uh, weed and uh, psychedelics. I actually asked if I could just do a six minute live stream with me rolling and smoking a joint and that's against Twitch's guidelines. So sorry guys. Subscribe to my OnlyFans, I guess. Um, but anyway, I, uh, I, wor I work in the alternative health space. And my bosses are constantly giving me drugs. 
Like if I were to get drug tested at work, it would be to make sure I'm doing enough drugs. And it causes a real conflict of interest at home because my roommates would totally call the cops on me. Well, my parents would totally call the cops on me. Um, living at home with them is fun. Quarantine's great. We're on day three of my boyfriend also staying with us. Really fun. Um, doing that thing. Uh, they, they are pretty, pretty strict on drugs though. They, uh, my mom smelled the incense in my room the other day and she thought it meant I was smoking weed in there. I think I'm going to tell her it was meth. Next time she smells it, at least she'll be like, please be weed and I can get her to smoke with me, you know? It'd be fun. Good little quarantine family bonding time. Also, alternative health is really weird. Like so many of these people want to act like they're woke. Dude, shut up. You're not Polly. You're horny. Chill out. Um, what else is up with me? Um, if it all goes to shit this year, this is not true anymore. But so far, <laughs> I'm in four weddings this year. Happy little bridesmaid. Look at that empty finger. Um, yeah, it's real fun. All of the weddings have the same uh, color scheme. So hopefully those brides are watching right now. Um, that would be fun. I get to hear an earful at the bridal shower. Um, two of them were, were kind of dumb with their dates, though. Uh, I don't usually get personal in my jokes, but Hannah, is uh, she is getting married on July 11th which is 7-Eleven, like the gas station. And she's been using hashtag oh thank heaven on all of their engagement photos, <laughs> which is the company slogan for 7-Eleven, for the gas station. Um, so if you go to that hashtag right now on Instagram, it's just hot dog pictures and then Hannah and her fiance. <laughs> Honestly, like if I show up to their wedding and they don't have gas station snacks at the reception, I quit. <laughs> it's free Slurpee day, bitch. I'm going somewhere else. Um, the other friend is getting married on Halloween, which at first really bothered me because that's my holiday. <laughs> I'm a white girl who wears horoscope shirts and light sage. Of course, Halloween is my holiday. Um, and, uh, then I thought about it and I realized I have the perfect wedding gift for this friend. Zombie bride. Come on. <laughs> We're going to do so well, especially since everyone knows when someone makes you their bridesmaid, it's like you're the godparent to their kid, but for their husband. So like he dies, you die. He's mine now. <laughs> I'm just going to collect husbands this year, y'all learning how to poison everyone with the Rona. That's how it's going to happen. I'm going to get infected and go to these weddings. Um, what else? Uh, I found out recently, I mentioned my boyfriend staying with us, found out recently he can suck his own dick, which, uh, yeah, that always gets an applause break. My fans back here, silent cheering. Um, yeah. Uh, found out he can suck his own dick. Please don't DM me about it. I won't give you tutorials that has happened. Um, when I, when I found out about this, I just felt the same way I did when I found out he can wash his own dishes. He just chooses to ask me to do it. Like, uh, dude, grow up, <laughs> clean up after yourself, suck your own dick. I'm not your mom. <sighs> Wipe the sink when you're done. It's a mess. Um, so that's been fun. Uh, I uh, used to lift weights. I'm hoping to be one of the people who comes out of this shit hotter. But uh, so far, I've been doing a lot of the stereotypical uh, lifting with jugs of milk um, at home. Love to lift weights, though. It's fun. Um, my favorite part about going to the gym is watching guys hit on girls at the gym because they always wait until we finish our set to come talk to us. Like, dude, if there's one time when we don't want to talk after finishing something, it's that. <laughs> Take your opportunity. Walk away. Uh, I was called a sadist recently. And I was like, dude, that's not how you get someone to stop choking you. <sighs> um, he said, no, it's because you like to lift weights. 
And I said, I don't think you understand. I started lifting weights to get hit on at the gym. This whole Me Too movement really fucked up my whole game plan. I used to have a line of guys waiting for me at the squat rack full of pointers, pun intended. Um, now I can't even get them to help me when I need it. <laughs> like uh, I'll start to lift something heavy and fail. And then I'll be like, help me. And they'll just say, oh, no, 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 no. I think that's rape now. And I totally just went way over my time on a rape joke. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Thank you. <laughs> She just said I went way over on the rape joke, just for the record, just so that we all heard that, yes. And for the record, I can suck my own dick. Pretty cool, pretty cool. I mean, I'm an introvert is what I'm saying, but you know, whatever happens. Also, this next comedian is by far funnier than any of you will ever be, okay? Just for the record. Uh, and also, she plays a character who is my son, Jean-Claude. Uh, we made a web series. It went to Van uh, South by Southwest. It, that did get canceled. So maybe check it out on uh, Kickstarter or maybe just give her all of the money right now. Please make some noise and drink some more craft beers. Give it up for Ariel Isaac Norman. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Um, yes, I am playing Colton's 10 year old son in a web series. 10 year old boy is my gender expression, after all. It is very natural for me. I guess I think I'm excited about this. It's kind of it feels douchey, but I think it should be freeing. I don't have to care about your laughter or your approval. I can't get it anyway. I'm also, have y'all not been reading the comments? This is so fun. I just want to become a Twitch comedian. Right away, we had someone, Choo Choo Train was like, y'all's comedy is giving me corona. Good. I hope you die. <laughs> I love this. I mean, like, is anyone else just having the best time in the coronavirus? Yeah, I am getting hotter, Allison. I do yoga and I run. That is such a fun thought to see people just like fall apart because they don't know how to take care of themselves in a crisis. <laughs> anyway, I hope y'all, are y'all having fun? I don't mean with the show, but with the coronavirus, it seems like the people who are talking in our comments are having fun. Like, I don't think that I get on the internet enough. Honestly, y'all are so much funnier. Like I have a heckling show once a month and these comments are so much funnier than the nerds who come to stuff in real life. I think the internet is a better world and I've been abandoning it just because like people in the real world are more physically attractive, but what are you gonna do? Um, yeah, the weddings I've already, I just had my first wedding canceled. And I, of course, like a, like, a, like a nerd, bought my plane ticket early, right before the coronavirus became a real thing, you know? And now, y'all think Alaska Airlines is gonna give me any of that money back or credit or anything? No, no. <sighs> um, yeah, let's see. Uh, Candace was talking about uh, how condoms in prisons, and then she was like, there should be condoms in prisons. That is so true. Like in men's prisons, do they have condoms? Like if you're not allowed to have, I mean, I guess they have conjugal visits, but like, even if they didn't, you gotta give them condoms. Cause it's like the same reason we give high school students condoms, even if you don't think they should be having sex. It's like, well, they're, they're gonna be raping anyway. You gotta, I mean, in prisons, not in high school. No, it's like, I can still feel, no, I don't know. Um, let me see if I can get comments. Cause I really do, Ariel is goals. What does that mean? Ariel, oh, people already like me. That must be what this is. This is nice. Uh, uh, anyway, okay. So I've been like, you know, writing down some thoughts, sure. In the, in the coronavirus times. Um, I think we all, uh, I think we can all agree that most men's faces are unattractive, right? I mean, that's just, it, you know, I think all of us can, pretty much agree that most just 
not all, probably all the people, you know, involved in this are, are uh, exceptions, but most men's faces are attractive. But so like men are supposed to have, <laughs> men are supposed to have beards. I don't know where we went backwards and like men, re- almost all men need to be having beards. Beards are nature's hijabs is what I realized. You know, we, I don't know why some cultures are getting that backwards, but <laughs> But then there are these people who only grow mustaches. And for a long time, I thought, okay, why would you just grow a mustache? You know that we think that you look like a pedophile. We call it the molestache. It's like a whole thing. And then I was talking to one of these guys and discovered like, oh, some guys, that really is their best option because they can't grow a real beard. It's like scraggly and they look stupid. And like, that's actually their best look for their face is if you just grow mustaches, otherwise you'd just look like a little boy. And so it's like your choices in life are between looking like a pedophile or still getting targeted by them. So anyway, now I have more empathy for those people. I think I'm out of time. That was fun. Thanks y'all. Or am I not? Cause I don't know what that, the picture came on in my little. Boom. Which is why I not only support trans women who want to take testosterone blockers, but uh but also i think that most men should be on testosterone blockers fours and below anyway which is most men fours and below should all you know and think about (laughs) everything that that would have solved in the last few years in our culture if um weinstein were on testosterone blockers louis ck would have solved these problems for them too um that bikram have y'all seen the bikram documentary if you haven't seen the bikram documentary please go watch it. It's truly incredible. Um, but that big firm guy, and all these men, by the way, convince themselves that these women want it. It's the craziest thing. You, if you're not watching these documentaries and like getting into the psychology of it, it's really fascinating. But if we would just give these men testosterone, it, they don't want to be horny either, constantly sexually rejected. It must be a burden. Wouldn't it be better for all of us if these men were not strong and horny? Government should give testosterone blockers for free to anybody who wants them, <laughs> trans or otherwise. Am I still going? Great. Um, yeah, I have this thing where I'm always trying to figure out compromises in our culture. Oh, there we go. Uh, compromises in our culture. Uh, like, I think, you know, some people don't want to use people's preferred pronouns out there. Uh, there's like, you know, um, maybe Scott Peterson or Ben Shapiro or Steven Crowder or whatever these people. And I'm just like, how about a compromise everyone? How about if everybody uh, just agrees that we'll all use each other's pronouns, whatever they are, but in return, we get the word retard back. And crowds usually pretty much cheer for that. So just so you know where we're at as a culture. Um, But just as a final thought, I, I think if nothing else, Bostonians should definitely get to say retard. Like that's retot for them. First of all, you know, as a people, they should, it's, it's their word. It's like their soft R slur, retot. Like if you want to get into a Boston accent, the phrase that they tell you to use is like, pock the cod, hobbit yod, you retot. You know what I mean? It's just part of their culture. Don't take that away from them. All right. Thanks y'all. It's been fun. Don't be so culturally insensitive. Ariel brings up a very good point. And another good point, this is a shirt called Huel. I've been wearing this and people have been saying, Colton, isn't Huel like Soylent? Isn't that like the Christian soup that they sell? Isn't that like hoarding food? Yeah. And I'm drinking food these days. If you guys want to come over, I'm in ugly Colorado Springs. So... Let me know um, what you want. This next comedian is actually apparently a very much a Twitch fan. She does tons of gaming online and she'll be doing it later tonight. She tours all over. I did a Colorado random stint with her. Very funny. Originally from Houston, 
Put your hands and drinks up for Roxy Hayes. Roxy Hayes, Roxy Hayes, Roxy Hayes. Shit, wait. My, it literally just froze. Wait, is it? Where'd it go? Am I there? I feel so old. I feel so old that I don't understand how this technology is working. First of all, Colton, like halfway lied to y'all. I kind of just started gaming. I don't want. I don't want to get roasted on here. They're like that bitch. That bitch is a liar. She only games on PS2, which is true. Um, and yeah, y'all were. All right about how the quarantine is fucking us up. I look mad dusty. I look extremely dusty, and it's and it's an unintentional. It's an unintentional dust. It's an unintentional dust. I'm starting to get that Helga Pataki unibrow coming in. Like I can't even like get no money for my hoes because I'm scared that I'm gonna get some some Rona dick, and I'm just I'm a little petrified. But that's all y'all need to know about what's going on in my life right now. Let's get to these jokes. I've been writing a whole lot. So boom, joke one. No, I didn't do that. But um, <laughs> it really does. Oh, wait, hold on. My child has her door open. Close your door. I'm working on the floor because this is the only part where the Wi-Fi works. Close the door and put your headphones on so that I can curse without. Well, it was close your door regardless. Yo, these schools need to read the fuck open. I'm tired of having to actually talk to my child all day kids get on my fucking nerves because they don't she's not like a, a great person to have <laughs> to chill with all day like there's no repartee anyway so yeah i mean this quarantine sucks because i already was not having sex pre-quarantine and i'm not exactly sure how long this is gonna last but i just know and i feel in my gut like i'm not gonna have any sex for at least like another month and if we're being honest, at this point, I'm kind of afraid at how my pussy looks. I'm afraid to even look at my pussy at that at this point. Like I'm scared I'm gonna open my legs and I'm gonna look like skeleton. It's gonna look like Skeletor from He Man. Like I'm I'm frightened. I'm frightened that I'm gonna open my legs and all I'm gonna hear is ah He Man. Like I don't want to hear that, that shit when I'm trying to get some penis. <laughs> That's terrifying. I hate Skeletor. I think out of all the 80s villains, Skeletor has to be like bottom, bottom tier villain just for the voice alone. Like, who's scared of a motherfucker <laughs> that sounds like he's consistently congested? You feel me? Just, just, nah. yeah, no, no, I was saying bottom tier level villain. But if we, if we asking, I, I think I think Skeletor would definitely be a, be a bottom. I can't picture a top just being like ah. <laughs> this is very hilariously difficult because I'm just afraid that my child's gonna open the door and I'm just in here just ah. <laughs> Show me the power of great scale, he man. That's not. She doesn't need to see that yet. She doesn't need to see that yet. Also, I'm on the floor because this is the only section of my home currently where this stolen Xfinity is working. And what's kind of shitty is I'm using one of my ex's login, but I don't recall which ex's login this is. And I don't feel like going down a list of contacts right now. So I guess I'll just have to wait post, post quarantine in order to fix this shit. I really like that Skeletor joke I'm adding to it. Um, I don't know how much time I got, so I'm gonna actually do uh, one of my uh, one of my favorite jokes, which is one of my favorite jokes um, is that I really enjoy theme songs. I really enjoy theme songs. Uh, it's one of my favorite forms of music, but I think people don't really respect theme songs because nobody knows the people that are singing the theme songs. So I feel like if Cher was singing theme songs, people would respect theme songs 
more as forms of music. Before I finish that joke, she re- it was his sister, but probably also his beard. But that was his sister. I don't think they were doing no incest. I can't remember where they're from, but could be because you know white people. But anyway, so but I digress. Yeah, she 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 was definitely gay, and so was he, man. Um, and Skeletor was definitely a bottom. Like, that's the noise you make upon insertion, just, ah! But anyway, so I love theme songs, and <laughs> I love theme songs, and so I do, I do, I can't even finish the setup, but I do theme songs um, as Cher. So I'm going to just do this Golden Girls theme song with my Cher voice because I don't have time to finish the videos. So here we go. Boom. <clears throat> Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. And if you threw a party, invited everyone you knew, you would see the biggest gift would be from me. And the card attached would say, thank you for being a friend. So, yeah, I'm Roxy Hayes. Please check out my new Twitch. I literally just made it yesterday. Um, follow me on all your social media. If you like any type of anime or nerd stuff, if you can't tell by the background, that's what I do. Thank y'all very much. Thank y'all very much for supporting comedy. Y'all have a good night. Hey, Skeletor was a bum. That's really important to know, especially if you guys are trying to stay healthy these days. I mean, you're gonna pick up a bottom. That's a lot of that's a lot of weight, you know. And and that and you could do squats. And sex is the most important way to stay healthy in quarantine times. Hit up the chat. Let me know your favorite calorie burning positions. Solo because I'm quarantined alone at the moment and I don't know how to burn these calories. Can't get gay fat. Gays are not into 2020 body positivity like you guys are. So, um, anyways, how about you guys let me know? Uh, but our next comedian is a very funny man. I met him at America's Got Talent. And it was a weird story, but I'm sure this he's not going to tell you about it. Put your hands and drinks together for Aaron Cheatham. Appreciate that. Uh, I'll tell the story. I don't have any problems telling the story. I met Colton uh, Dowling the first time at America's Got Talent in the bathroom. Uh, true story. I was taking a shift. Colton was in the bathroom. We locked eyes, and he's been my boy ever since. I got no shame in telling that damn story. Uh, hope everybody's doing all right out there during this self-isolation. I'm going to tell you off top. Not a lot has changed about my life at all. Uh, except for the fact that the wife and kids are at the house 24 hours. Like, this shit feels like the longest weekend of all time. This is, it's been Saturday for four days, and goddamn it, Monday can't come fast enough. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. The, the oddest thing I've seen since we've been doing the self-isolation is uh, 
is my son had a play date with one of his friends from daycare, which, you know, is hard to do. So we had to do it over the phone. They had a phone play date. And I don't know if you've ever seen a toddler talk on the phone, but it's the dumbest shit you've ever seen, right? Like, they don't, they can't have a conversation. They come, hey, how you doing? Hey, look at my teeth. And then they run the fuck off. That's the conversation for a toddler on the telephone. So imagine two of these dumb little son bitches yelling at each other on the phone, telling all their family's business to strangers. I'm sitting there on the couch while my wife is holding the phone, and my son is yelling in the phone, telling all oh, my goddamn business. We got snakes in the backyard now. My daddy saw a bunch of them. The one got in his shoe. Mommy said that he yells like a little girl. My daddy went, ah! I had never heard him make that noise before. Ooh, it was funny. And I got to sit on the side of the couch with the, don't tell all my goddamn business. It's like, so some bitch talking all my business in the street. Because it's not like he's just talking to the little boy. The mama in there, the dad, the now there, the next time we go to a birthday party, we'll be looking at my ass like, oh, that's that dude that acted real funny about the snakes. He talking about some country ass spice world little motherfucker. He's made used to seeing snakes. Listen, y'all, I ain't seen a snake exactly in that goddamn long. All right? It's a trip. It's a trip being at the house. I mean, I'm with the wife, with the kids. My wife is cool. Um, she's the type of person, though, that likes to use stronger words than what's necessary in conversation. I don't know if you know anybody like this, where she can say something to me very easily and get a point across, right? But she don't do that. She chooses specific words to use to piss me off. Like right now, her favorite word to use is addicted. She loves telling me that I'm addicted to things, right? She'll come in the house, I'm playing a game on my cell phone. She goes, Hey, playing that game again, huh? You are addicted to that game. No, bitch, I just like the game, all right? You miss the jewelry, huh? Still got TVs in the house, right? The fuck, I ain't addicted. I'm not sucking dudes off behind Whataburger to actualize a candy crush. I just like the game. She go in the kitchen, look in the freezer. <gasps> Bang! Rocky Road ice cream. You are addicted to Rocky Road ice cream. No, I just like it. I, right? I'm not trying to freebase this shit. I'm not heating up on the spoon, shooting it up between my toes, trying to get a sugar freeze. I just like the ice cream. You know what I'm saying, man? This damn trip. Dealing with women, trying to be married. You don't want because as guys, we don't want to say shit and go too far. Like, I remember when we first got together, she used to ask me a ton of questions. A lot of inquisitive stuff, trying to get to know you. So where are you from? Where, you, where do you see yourself in five years? Do you want to have children? Now she asks me questions like, when you go to get a job, why you always take this exit? Why don't you take the other exit? Where are my side nigga? I just want to call these stupid ass questions and shit, right? The other day she said, Babe, I need you to take the trash out. I said, babe, why don't you take the trash out? She goes, well, taking the trash out is a man's job. <sighs> Bitch, are you serious? In 2020, a man's job? I said, hold on now. Who mopped the floors this week? She said, you did. I said, who cooked dinner tonight? She said, you did. I said, who read the kids a book and put them to bed tonight? She said, you did? I go, last I checked, those is all woman jobs to get your ass up and take the trash out. She said, who paid the mortgage the last two months? I said, give my copy of cheese and get the trash out real quick. <laughs> it's a trip, man. It's a trip, man. We got two kids, a two-year-old and a four-year-old. One of them putting all my business in the street. The other one's a fucking thug. She don't say shit. She don't say shit. I love her for that. Two kids, both of them born in the month of December. People ask me all the time, talking about that on purpose. Y'all trying to have two kids in the same month? No, not psychopaths. Like nobody intentionally has two kids in the same month. In the middle of the holiday season, I'm fucked for life. Both my kids are born in December. I'm so fucked. But it's not hard to realize how I ended up in a situation. It's really just basic math, right? Both of my kids are full-term pregnancies, which is which is 40 weeks. 40 weeks is 10 months. Just do the math. My son, he's born Christmas Day. Son of a bitch. That kid is the gift that keeps on taking. I'm trying to tell you. He's born Christmas Day. Go back 10 months, you get February 25th. That's my wife's birthday. My daughter born December 2nd. You go back 10 months, you get February 2nd. My birthday's February 5th. 
See, we weren't trying to have two kids in the same month. We just got drunk on our birthdays and now we're a family. That's how that shit happened. Hey, you guys stay safe. Enjoy the rest of this show. You got a lot of heavy hitters coming up. My boy Ty Wings coming up next. Also, my boy Daniel Shepard. Check it out. And hey, y'all be safe. Keep your head up. And uh, we're gloves and shit. And stop stealing the toilet paper with your punk asses. Yeah. Cheatham reminding us that relationships aren't always just one man and one larger man. <laughs> Pretty weird. I have an unboxing to do. It's a beer. <laughs> Crack one with me if you're with me. It's good and too much. Craft beer will sneak up on you, but don't worry. I changed my pace and the pace I'm rocking is a very a new one where I built a comedy stage in my own home. And then I let a bunch of comics stay in there. So uh, this next comic is also uh, uh, staying in that house. And he's a very, very funny man. He uh, has a special that was filmed at the Paramount. He's a very funny, funny, funny boy. Give it up for Ty, new win. <laughs> Because I was under the impression 
that hey, America is the number one country in the whole wide world. So why would they feed their people garbage? And it turns out America's a greedy whore. Because every year, Taco Bell just come out with something new to murder your intestines <laughs> and Agent Orange your butthole. Trust me on this. Taco Bell gave me PTSD, post-traumatic spicy diarrhea. I don't even wear white pants anymore because they don't turn burgundy. <laughs> Taco Bell made this diabolical invention to destroy the American gastrointestinal system. It's the nacho fries. They're mixing two health risks for the price of wine. Because fries is linked to cancer, and nacho cheese is linked to, ooh, honey, I can't do that tonight. I have Taco Bell. I have the nacho fries. Y'all have the nacho fries? I'm sure y'all have. And that shit tastes good. I have no problem with it. I just wonder why other fast food joints doesn't call Taco Bell out on that. Like, hey. You're supposed to be a fake Mexican fast food joint. Stick to the script, buddy. What's next? I'm gonna walk inside of Panda Express and see teriyaki potato top. Ladies and gentlemen, if I ever have white kids, that's what I'll call them. Teriyaki potato top. <laughs> hey kids, wanna know your origin story? Daddy's best teriyaki all over your mom Taylor, and that's how you ended up with all A's and in a garage band. Your music sucks, Timmy. You have a whole bunch of aggression with no justifiable cause. I wish you good. Ain't a lot of shitty food growing up. Um, I ate Vina can sauces. We all have vegan can sauces, right? For those who never have vegan can sauces, you're about to have some because <laughs> food's going to be out, so you're going to have to buy it. But for those who are not desperate enough yet, vegan can sauces taste like hot dogs that have been through concentration camps. I just want to say a horrible joke before I go. I'm going to say a horrible joke. Uh, people see me as a nice guy, but they don't see me alone in my room, joking off to terrorism. <laughs> Here's a new conspiracy theory. 9-11 was a hand job. That's my set. Thank you so much for tuning in. <laughs>
I am. I'm not used to like being on my phone this long live with my clothes on. So if we want to make it that kind of show, we could only keep it like PG-13. If you, uh, you Venmo me $69, who knows what you'll see. Uh, just kidding. That's not how it works. Um, <laughs> somebody text me drunk. I'm not drunk yet. Okay, so I, uh, this is, oh boy, I got this, I got this new hat and I'm like, I like it. I uh, just kind of covering my, like I went baldish, but like it makes me look more like a boy instead of a man. And I kind of like it. Like a uh, guy told me I look like a boy who got left behind at the supermarket. I think that's adorable. Like I grew up in Arizona and I literally was in the Grand Canyon and I was like, my dad just like, he just like, I just got left behind in the Grand Canyon and I was wandering all alone. And then a, and then a guard came up. He was a, uh, what do you call it? Like a park ranger. He was a park ranger. And if the, he was a park ranger and he came up and he gave me his, he gave he gave me his uh trail mix and i was like thank you and, I, and I, that's not like a euphemism like his trail mix not a euphemism but it is like a metaphor for my sexuality which is i feel like a boy who's just wandering the grand canyon this big old messy place wandering around waiting for a guy to Waiting for a guy just to give me his nutsack. I hope you found that funny. Ugh. Oh my god. Um, I, uh, I, I. When I first came to Austin, I was like very lonely, so I was like kind of here on my couch or futon, and I was like just texting. I was like, uh, I was like messaging. I was on the meetup groups, and I was like looking up all the meetup groups, and I was like, oh my god. This place is very autism friendly. There was like autism walks around the park, autism karaoke, autism comedy. And then I realized I was just high. I was reading Austin wrong. And uh, I, uh, and then I came here and then I, when I, uh, first time I was here in Austin, uh, I was in a, uh, in a little apartment it was a small apartment. It was a 500 square foot apartment. And I lived with two lesbians and five pets. They were, uh, and so they were in a committed relationship for like three months, but every time they got into a fight, they would just adopt another pet. And one of them worked at Pet Smart, So they got like discounts. And at the end, we ended up getting seven pets. It was two cats, two cats, two birds, a ferret, a mouse and a sugar glider. I don't know if you know what a sugar glider is, but it's like a flying rodent and it would just like, it, it, it would just like needed attachment. It just like, it would like you put into your private, ah! It would just like put it, somebody, Venmo me, thank you. Okay, so I, uh, I will show you my feet. Okay, so I, uh, I got distracted. I'm very distracted. Okay, so the sugar glider, it's like this little small, it's just a rodent that will just attach to, it's cute. It's like, an, it just, it's just uh, read it to be needy. And it would just like, just hang on this person. And the thing is, is that they didn't give it attention because they had all these other pets. So it would just do these angry backflips at night. It would scare the shit out of the cats. And 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 what was uh, and it and it would just hiss at them every time they tried to feed it. I hope they bit out like their fingers so they would never have sex again, because um, that's how lesbians have sex. Okay, so well, that's gross. Um, I uh, this is a what, oh yeah, and this so the sugar glider was just this angry, lonely thing that every time somebody tried to feed it, it would just hiss at them. And if you're really honest about yourself, myself, sometimes I feel like an angry, like just a banded sugar glider, just hissing at anybody that feeds me. Like it's, I haven't dated in a while. And dating for me, dating for me is like me just being an, 
just me going to a restaurant, just yelling at a guy, why can't you love me? Okay, um, I, uh, I have, I've been, I, I, I've, this is, we've been isolated and I've been reading my past journals and I'm going to uh, read an excerpt from a journal when I was in high school because I thought this was funny and it's, uh, yeah, we'll just do this. This was written in August 2nd in 2004. And this was just goals for this was just goals for the new school year because school started in August. So number one, stop watching TV. Number two, read the Bible an hour a day. Number three, write my novel. Number seven, stop masturbating. Number eighteen, uh, brush your hair. Number nineteen, keep your eyes from sinning. Number twenty-seven, Dave Matthews is okay. But when you're obsessing over them, listen to other music for a week. Number 43, being liberal in moderation is okay. Just don't be a homosexual who is practicing. And number 68, I need to stop masturbating. Anyway, thank you guys so much. Bye. <laughs>
I am from the point of office that's being gentrified right now. You know, a lot of a lot of black people got an issue about the gentrification. So I did like what any activist would do. I had a meet with all the homies and uh, come to find out we're not tripping, ladies and gentlemen. We, we are not tripping because uh, we used to have to go to Lakeway and West Lake just to rob people. Now we can just go right down the street. So thank y'all very much for just find our neighborhood. You, you bring tea, drink your motherfuckers. You, you buy some rides, some of them bitches. Them the easy ones right there. They be on their bicycle riding and shit and all of a sudden, it's warm. <laughs> What are you doing, man? I'm welcome you to the neighborhood, goddamn it. That's the fuck I'm doing. I'm welcome you to the neighborhood, bitch. You get your ass moving, and we break it in your house instead of bikes and shit. That's what you're doing, goddamn That's what happens to you when you come to the hood, goddamn You know what I'm saying? They be looking at their brochures and shit like, man, they said they got rid of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bitch, we still here, bitch. We still here, goddamn <laughs> We like the flu, bitch. We don't know no, no goddamn where we still here, goddamn. Uh, goddamn cheering. Man, I man, they sent me a, an email today saying that uh kids might have to get homeschooled. I'm like, that's some bullshit right there. My kids, my kids ain't gonna graduate if I gotta homeschool their ass shit. <laughs> they ass ain't gonna learn a bitch of everything fucking with me. Shit. <laughs> I, I can be honest with you, man. I mean, I'm 38 years old, man. I can be honest with y'all, man. I can, I can barely read, ladies and gentlemen. I can barely read, man. I mean, I was trying to read the other day. I was in a room. I was trying to sign out the word like the day in school. I was like, oh, 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 oh. You ever concentrated on something so hard? Your head started hurting. You're like, damn. Sephora, that's my daughter's name. I said, Sephora, what does this word say right here? She said, practice. I'm so stupid ass. If you go, sorry, whoop your ass. But you write. Right, that it needs to practice. Goddamn. I learned how to uh count by uh, watching Sesame Street. Man, y'all remember this song right here? It's come on, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That was shit right there, especially when they whispered it to you. You were like, Oh, the word, <laughs> shit. that shit ain't gonna never leave my goddamn head. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That shit be jamming right there. That's some. Uh, fun black history fact, ladies and gentlemen, because the point of is actually wrote that goddamn song. I know y'all didn't think y'all was going to learn something from my ignorant ass tonight, but you just did. It's point of Susan wrote, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. What else is going on with this quarantine shit? I've been getting a lot of. A lot of heat doing this goddamn <laughs> this quarantine shit. I'm about to get a lot of heat, boy. These motherfuckers nervous, goddamn, right now, boy. They be sucking, like, they sucking for their life and shit. Like, whoa, whoa. If you ever watch a fat person eat a chicken wing, you know what I'm saying? Like, they just be fucking that chicken wing up, and you be like, oh, bitch, I wish I was that chicken wing right now. I wish I was that chicken wing. That's how they sucking me off right now. Be like, man, you making me. You making my ego go way up here, because like you better stop giving a good head like that to a ain't shit motherfucker like me. <laughs> but I might get my ego and self confidence might go up to where I think I'm somebody, and I know I ain't shit. You know? I know I ain't shit. I tell my daughter all the time, "Look at me, baby. Look at this right here. This is this what ain't shit look like? You know, I be goddamn if my baby come home with a dude and be like, Daddy, this dude." He's great, daddy. He reminds me of you. He's just like you. I'm fucking him up on sight, guys. And I'm beating this motherfucker ass. <laughs> I know he ain't shit. I know he ain't shit, man. I'm saying, uh, what else, man? I got a shirt on. got the little merch on for y'all, man. Uh, my ex is doing better without me. Uh, I'm grown. I can say shit like that. My ex is doing better without me. I seen him uh, about three weeks ago. Uh, the police said I was stalking. But uh, I seen her like three weeks ago. I go to court like whenever this quarantine shit come up. You know what I'm saying? But that's besides the point, ladies and gentlemen. And so I want to say she's doing great. She's doing great. I seen her and her skin is clean up. Ooh, man. I had her going back. I was like, God damn, boy. I was fucking your life up. Best thing you ever did was leave you fucking alone. She just... <laughs> My age is doing better without me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm having them shirts out. You know what I'm saying? Next week. <laughs> Or the week after that, doing big things, man. I really need this comedy shit to jump off, ladies and gentlemen. 
Have you ever noticed, like, right before somebody make it real big, they always got the same story? Like, right before I made it big, I was sleeping in my car. So for the past one and a half, I've been sleeping in my truck, in my driveway. You know, I'm just trying to speak this shit up, ladies and gentlemen. I'm trying to speak this shit up, man. You know, oh, what's going on with me, man? Uh, I just celebrated the year clean and serene. You know, uh, I go to the meetings and shit. You know, they give out the little key tags you know, for your clean time and stuff like that. But I never share. I never share because I can't I can't follow sucking dick and adding for crap. I can't do that. That's just too much right there, man. All my stories are cool, like smoking weed and ludicrous and shit like that. My shit is, is dope, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but before I get out of here, ladies and gentlemen, I, I just want to tell y'all thank you very much for allowing me to do what I love. And y'all have a good night, man. <laughs> We did it. This is the end of the show. How are you guys doing? We have one more comedian. And by the way, very lucky to have her. I try to get her out once a year because that's all I can afford. But you guys just got her in your house for free. She has been on BET. She has been on True TV. She is so funny. She comes to Awesome Pride every year. So if you've been there, you may have seen her. She comes all the way up from Houston, not that far, but we can't afford her. She's so great. So make sure that you flood her inbox with lots of Venmo money. And also, just for the record, we're going to be posting everybody else's uh, Venmo on the, uh, at the end. But also, we have some very, very, very solid backline. Like, yes, all these comedians are out of work. <laughs> yes, they're very, very funny. But we have... Richard, who's doing it? Richard Goodwin, who's just making this technology happen. All of us are fucking idiots. We barely knew how to log in, and this man made it happen. So just in your house, just, you know, give it up for him. Also, give it up for Valerie Lopez. You know, you're making it happen. Also, Laura Smith, she she brought us all together. We didn't even know. We thought it could happen, but it didn't happen. But for the final comedian, oh, I'm sorry, one more. Apparently, you guys have been hearing some music. That's Derek Kopswa. Thank you, Derek Kopswa. We'll probably have him on in the future and we'll have more shows. But right now, give your beers and all your eyes attention to your very lucky fucking self. Good for you, but also, you know, pay attention to Keisha Hunt. Not a MAGA hat. Yeah, buddy, what it do, great people? Uh, I'm glad y'all here with me in this uh situation we in. I feel like I'm in every movie I watched when I was a kid. And they say wash your hands, but what about the people with nubs? I think you need to scrub a little. Uh, we're not, we're not, we're not gonna be prejudiced against you. I think you need to, when you greet me next time, I need to make sure you ask somebody to help you squeeze some sanitizer on your nub. I'm just saying. Uh, I probably look really, really high right now because that's what you do when you're stuck in a situation like this. You smoke a lot of CBD. In case my son's father is watching, it's CBD. Uh, Child support, ain't no halt on that. I have to pay child support. Uh, it's probably because I look like a dude now because that's what somebody told me. They said, you look like a dude now, so they're going to treat you like one. And I'm like, but Holly Berry is gorgeous and she paid child support. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, I was just talking to a friend of mine about some other shit. This is amazing to me, first of all. I've never done nothing like this. I'm sitting in the corner of my house with my 1980 boom box, if you can tell. Uh, I just got this shit yesterday, too because I feel like I needed some tunes in the situation we in, you know? Uh, everybody need to sit their ass down. I don't know what's going on right now. Uh, I have no clue. I don't have regular TV. Do they still sell regular TV? Because I like this shit. Uh, 
whatever the fuck we on. Uh, somebody text me how to get back on it so I can watch it later. I am not old, but I'm going to get with the times because I'm thinking about investing into some virtual sex. Because uh, I think that's where we headed. I think the only way we're going to get some of that plus is if we put on a mask virtually and uh and get into it. You feel me? And I, y'all remember Demolition Man? Like that. Like when Sandra Bullock was like, well, come on over and get some of this good old pussy, but you got to put this face mask on first. So you can virtually, you know, get some of this virtual cooch. But I think I'm going to invest into that because I'm really thinking that's where we're going to be in the next, you know, in the next uh, quadrillum or something like that or whatever we're going to call years after all this is burnt up. I don't know how you how you kill a virus. You burn the shit. So I'm thinking that's what's going to happen. Uh, pretty much is what it is. I do have a son. I tried to call him. He's making me feel like I'm a horrible mother. But he only texts me back because he say, I don't know if it's just between a cough and a sneeze, you can catch this, mama. But I think if you talk on the phone, you can get the shit, too. And I'm like, why are you cussing at me? But he felt the need to be in that moment to talk to me like that. And, you know, he's he's really tall. My son is six one, you know, and I can't, you know, correct him like I want to anymore, you know. So he just holds my head as I swing at him constantly. And I never I never make a I never land a punch or anything like that. But uh. Yeah, so pretty much this has got me fucked up. It remind me that time when I went to jail, except I don't have any uh, women to bribe uh, with hot chips to get some of that pasta. I'm just here by myself. Uh, I've decided to uh, throw away all my dildos because it's really, you can't, I can't give the dick away. It's not happening. So I just, I was like, fuck it. Me and my pillow have been best friends. <laughs> I've been fucking the shit out of my pillow. That, I've been giving the pillow the business. I don't know what this, what this, what we in and what kind of energy it is. But I was like, how come I've never fucked my pillow before? My pillow's a bad bitch. I'm telling you right now, I fucked the shit out that pillow. Uh, but yeah, make sure y'all Venmo me some of that cash so I can get a new pillow, one I can lay on and one I can lay with. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, y'all seen Demolition Man? Okay, yeah, cool. I asked y'all that already. But yeah, make sure y'all, uh, y'all keep it locked with us. With this, in, what we calling this? Isolation comedy. I like this shit. This shit fun than a motherfucker, too. Uh, but I appreciate y'all coming on here and listening. I said that already, man. And I did tell the people to watch the nubs, right? And y'all quit listening to President, President Trump. He fucking y'all head up. <laughs> but he is funny as hell. But I'm not agreeing with him. But he is hilarious. But I'm not saying, let's do, you know, everything he's saying. You know, and I'm not saying vote for him, either. Like, no, nah, that ain't, I don't even know that nigga like that. But other than that, yeah, I got a little gas. That's that's because I'm trying to preserve a lot of my food because I don't know. They talking about they going to lock us down and shit. And I'm like, I don't need no motherfucker knocking on my door. Too. Come off the noodles, bitch. I'm like, this nigga robbing me for noodles? I don't want them days. I cannot, I cannot help somebody knocking on my door trying to rob me for a pack of noodles. Oh, no. <laughs> what happened to Keisha, man? She... She, she shot by four, five motherfuckers trying to rob her for some noodles. Some noodles? A pack of ramen noodles is 10 cents. We don't want that. We're not trying to get there. So if everybody would bow their heads with me in prayer, we're going to pray for the country. Heavenly for no. No. If you do your own prayer, you know, your salam is like us. And uh, your nami o ho range kios and all that right there. But I just want to say thank y'all. It's hot in here because I'm, again, conserving. Because I don't know. I took some of my ad and put it up in the storage unit and I left it over there because that's how you know I could do that I don't know what kind of powers y'all got but I can I could conserve every motherfucking thing that's what I could do uh y'all make sure y'all store up good make sure y'all get bullets because motherfuckers gonna come knocking on your door for a bottle of water and if you don't give it to them pow pow I'm just kidding I'm playing oh my gosh I shouldn't have done that oh I'm just playing god damn I hate I did that oh that is horrible okay well I apologize for that one I was just patty cake and that's what it looked like i don't know how to shit down okay we'll delete that part uh i appreciate y'all once again uh smoke a little weed feeling fine live your best life get some of that it, and throw your dildos away no more dildos in 2020 all right peace out and goodbye <laughs>
Also, not throwing away my dildos. Boy, do I. I'm just not going to do it. No need to go into why. We all know why. And also, that was it. That was our show. Uh, thank you so much. Let us know if we should do it again. This is a new medium for us. Uh, we appreciate everybody who's been a part of it. Definitely Venmo if you feel like it. Um, I've drank about too much craft beer at this point. So I, I feel like I want to just thank you everybody again. Thank you all of our comedians. I hope that uh, you drank it up as much as I did. I'm gonna go hot tubbing now. That's what I'm gonna go do. I planned a good Armageddon. I'm sorry if I did. I'm, so <laughs> I'm sorry, I planned it good. Uh, if you guys were denying it for a while, you guys were denying it. It's not that big of a deal. It's more of a flu. I've been planning. Uh, I have a hot tub. I have a very cozy dog. Uh, that sounds weird. Anyways, I uh, thank you guys so much. Follow us because I am releasing Van Damme Jean-Claude tonight. I'm doing it. I You guys need shit to look at. And, uh, and that's what I'm doing. So thank you, everybody. Follow us on Isolation Comedy, and I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Have a good day. And go suck a handrail, you fucking piece of shit. Go lick a handrail. Go lick a handrail. Go lick a handrail, you piece of shit. <laughs>